Welcome to Chemisode. This is VCE Chemistry Unit 4. This video series is called Chemisode and it's because it's episodes to do with chemistry. Um, the, as you know, if you've followed the Chemisode videos beforehand, you know that there is a um, Edmodo page which has the notes which I use for these videos that you can download and you can follow along um, there as well. On Edmodo also, there's also a whole bunch of, there's going to be some quizzes, so some multiple choice um, quizzes which you can answer. There's also um, homework sheets, one sheet each week which you can download and you can attempt that. Each week I put up the solutions to the homework sheet and you can also um, see how you're going with those as well. The videos that you're watching are on YouTube, so um, if you go to YouTube, Mr. Jason Gowdy, you can see all the other units for chemistry as well. So there's some videos for Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4 for this VCE chemistry thing. On iTunes, um, there's a audio podcast, which is a summary for all the stuff that we do here in the videos. And also, um, there's an app for Unit 1 and Unit 3. And shortly, there will also be an iPhone and iPad app out for Unit 2 and Unit 4. I'm still working on putting together the flashcards for that, but that will be out shortly as well. So if you're looking at this um, somewhere towards the uh, middle or end of 2013, hopefully it'll be out there already. But at the moment, I'm still putting to through together all the stuff for that. All right, this um, video is about collision theory. So um, here is the key words that you're going to need to know about collision theory. Um, I'll be referring back to these words quite frequently throughout our, um, our video, and hopefully at the end of it, you should be able to use these words in a sentence about collision theory. If you can use these words, these key words that we're talking about, um, you'll be able to understand collision theory quite well, and you'll be able to answer most questions to do with collision theory if you're thinking in the right way. Let's have a look at collision theory. What is collision theory? Well, the idea is that for a reaction to happen, two molecules must collide. Without two molecules colliding, we don't get a reaction to occur. In order for um, atoms to swap around and to form different things, they need to hit each other and therefore then they can start to um, change form. So a reaction requires a collision. If we have um, lots of collisions, so um, coll collisions happening um, at a, f a fast rate, that means the reaction actually goes quite fast. If the reaction happens slowly, that means we're not getting a lot of collisions happening. So what we deal with in terms of reaction rates, which is what this um, podcast is about, is to do with making collisions happen more often, making successful collisions happen more often in particular. So let's go have a look at how we can make collisions happen. There's four main areas of collisions. There's four things that we can change which can increase or decrease the amount of collisions that happen. First one is to do with the surface area of a solid. If we change the surface area of the solid, we either get more or less collisions depending on whether we're increasing or decreasing the surface area. The concentration of solutions and gases. Obviously, how much you have of something will depend or will make a difference as to how often you get a collision occurring. So the concentration of solutions and gases obviously has a massive effect on your collisions. The temperature. Temperature has a very interesting effect on the rate of collisions or the rate of a reaction. So we're going to look at that in um, a bit of detail, the temperature, and we're also going to look at what a catalyst does because as you may, might remember from um, last year or last semester even, a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. So obviously that has something to do with collisions. But we're going to look at how that works in terms of collision theory. So let's go have a look at the first one now, which is all to do with surface area of solids. The surface area of a solid is simply that. It is basically what you, what, how much surface there is for a solid. Uh, I've got a 2D representation here of a solid here, so it's only two-dimensional. What you guys should be thinking about is three-dimensional as well, so obviously it adds a bit more um, intrigue to it. But here is a 2D version of a metal, a lump of metal. Okay, 
we're going to react this metal with acid. And acid, as you know, contains hydrogen ions. They're the things that actually um, uh, play around with metals in terms of reaction. Now, if you have a large lump of solid, if you have a large lump of metal, the only metal atoms that can react are those ones at the surface. These guys stuck in the middle, these guys can't react with it. Okay, So all these um, things which are in the middle here cannot react. It's only the ones on the surface. Now, if I break this lump of metal down into smaller parts, what happens is I get a lot more of these atoms exposed to the surface. What this means is I get a whole bunch more collisions. We get um, hydrogen ions being able to collide with the ones that were in the middle. So what we're doing here is we're decreasing the particle size. In decreasing the particle size, what that does is it increases the surface area. So we get a lot more surface being able to react. Because we have increased the surface area, we increase the speed of reaction. This is due to an increase in the number of collisions. So the frequency of collisions will increase. So the important part, because there is more surface area or more surface for the particles to collide with, the frequency of collisions will increase. Frequency just means the rate, the how many collisions per second or how many collisions per minute however many happen. All right, so the frequency of collisions will increase because you've got more surface for the particle to collide with. All right, um, think about, if you want, with this example, think about, I've been watching Game of Thrones recently, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with one of those, a massive army. Say you have a massive army um, and you are gonna get attacked by a lot of people. If you all huddle together, what's gonna happen is it's only the people on the outside which are gonna get attacked first. The people in the middle are gonna be pretty much all right. However, if, for instance, you split yourselves up into um, all these different areas, what can happen is everyone can get attacked at once and the reaction or the, the mortality in terms of um, this army example will increase. So think about it that way. Decreasing the particle size or breaking a um, substance up will make it react more quickly. In a more chemical side of things, we can think about this as being a lump of sugar and trying to dissolve a lump of sugar. Or um, think of this as being a stock cube and trying to dissolve a stock cube into making a soup. If you crush that stock cube up or if you crush that um, lump of sugar up, it will dissolve more, it will dissolve quickly or more quickly. It's just common sense. Decrease the particle size, you increase the rate of which the reaction occurs. Now, that's the first one, surface area of solids. Let's go have a look at how the concentration affects it. Here is the concentration. Obviously, we have two different um, containers here. One has a very small concentration of red dots, and the other one has a large concentration of red dots. As you can imagine, a, a reaction will happen when a red dot collides with a blue dot. Which one? is going to have red dots and blue dots colliding more often, you betcha it's going to be this one with the larger concentration, simply because there are more molecules to collide with. Okay, Because there are more molecules to collide, they will collide more frequently. This means we have an increase in the frequency of collisions, thus we have an increase in the speed of the reaction. So increasing the concentration increases the speed in which the reaction happens. I'm not going to go too much more into depth here, but you get the idea. It's pretty straightforward with concentration. Don't need to go into too much detail. But the important thing is you're saying the molecules will collide more frequently or the frequently of, frequency of collisions will increase because there are more molecules around or here to collide with. Let's look at temperature. And Temperature is the next one. This takes a bit more explaining, so let's go have a look at that. Here is the temperature. I've drawn these two diagrams. Um, you can see my lovely handwriting here or my drawing, my artistic skills. The first one here has got a few speed lines on them. These guys coming up here are speed lines. It means these are moving um, a bit slowly. They've only got two speed lines. Whereas over here, these guys have got lots of speed lines on them. 
it means that they're moving quite fast. They're, they're moving very quickly. Which one has the higher temperature? From year seven, you'll understand that this one must have the higher temperature because it's moving quickly. As you increase the temperature, the speed of the particles will increase. Now, as you can imagine, if you're thinking about collisions, if you start running around faster, you're going to collide with things more often. So obviously, the increase in temperature will increase the speed of which the particles are moving, and that in itself will increase the number of collisions you have. However, with temperature, there's also another factor that comes into play, and that is the strength of the collision that you have. For a reaction to happen, not only do you need to collide, but you need to collide with a certain amount of energy. You need to collide with um, enough energy to break the bonds of another molecule and then you'll reattach to whatever you're going to, your product is going to be. So what we're doing is not only are we increasing the number of the um, collisions, we're also increasing the strength of the collisions. And that is why we increase the rate of reaction because we have the number of successful collisions will increase. Because if you just bump into someone um, lightly, it's not going to make um, any difference. However, if you bump into someone with a lot of energy, you're going to make a massive difference and therefore you're going to get a reaction happen. You can imagine that. So temperature deals with the speed of the molecules. So therefore the number of collisions and the strength of the collisions will increase. I'm going to quickly show you um, a distribution here of um, particles with certain amounts of energy. And you can see here, we've got two different temperatures. You've got temperature one and temperature two. This line, the vertical axis here, tells you how many or the proportions of collisions with a certain amount of energy. So what we've got here is, um, let's give this numbers. Let's give this um, middle here 50. Let's give this 100. Down here at about um, 20, what we've got is a, at temperature one, we've got a lot of molecules with it, which are colliding with an energy of 20, whereas we have only a few molecules at temperature two. As we increase the temperature, increase the energy of collisions, all right, what we see as we go up here, at temperature two, we've got lots of particles with a certain amount of energy. At temperature one, we've got less particles with this certain amount of energy. As we move forward and forward and forward, you can see that as we move up in energy, temperature one has less particles at the high energy than temperature two. What does this tell you about temperature one and temperature two? Well, it says it here. Temperature one is a lower temperature than temperature two. Temperature one being a lower temperature means it has more particles with this low energy, whereas temperature two has more particles with a higher energy. If, for instance, our activation energy is here, this line here, what we can see is at a low temperature, we have not many particles with this amount of energy. However, when we increase the temperature, we get an increase in the number of particles with the successful number or successful amount of energy to collide to form a reaction. So that's kind of just a graphical expression of what we've got with um, the activation energy and how that relates to reaction rates. Remember, temperature, it's not just the number of collisions, but it's the number of successful collisions or number of collisions with the correct amount or higher activation energy. So you can see here that all the um, particles above EA, these guys will form successful collisions whereas all the particles below EA here will not form successful collisions because they need this amount of energy to collide to form the reaction. Let's move on, okay, because I, I think I've explained that well enough. Um, if you don't understand this, please send me a message because um, it, it's pretty straightforward, but if you don't understand it, please let me know and I'll try and explain it a little bit better for you. Let's move on to catalysts. What do catalysts do? What catalysts do is they provide a surface for the reaction to happen. Okay, what they do is they basically allow the number of successful collisions to increase. Okay, 
They do that by re providing a reaction pathway which is at a lower energy. Um, let's have a look at let's have a look at what it says here anyway. Um, first of all, we have this idea here. We have a catalyst surface. Um, what happens is we have our two substrates or our two reactants. What happens is the reactants they first of all bond to the catalyst. They first of all form a slight bond to the catalyst, and then they bond with each other and come off. Particles first of all adsorb onto the surface of the catalyst. They form a, a slight bond with the catalyst surface. This lowers the activation energy required for the reaction, and thus we get more successful collisions. Um, I can't obviously write here. More successful collisions is what it's supposed to say. So um, this is how react um, catalysts work by lowering the activation energy, providing a surface for these reactions to occur on. Let's have a little look at this diagram in terms of catalysts. Um, this is like the energy profile. So this is the energy profile for a reaction. You can see this red one here, we have a large activation energy. With this green one, we have a lower activation energy. So this is your catalyzed reaction. Okay. Notice the reactants and the products still have the same amount of energy because you're not changing what reactants you have. You're not changing what products you have. All you're doing is providing a different pathway for the reaction to proceed in. Okay, It's giving you a different um, way of going about it. If you can imagine, um, think about driving. You can either um, maybe go straight up the hill and then down again, or you can go around the base of the hill. Okay. The base of the hill is your catalyst because you don't require your engine to do a lot of lifting work. You don't have to go up a hill. Okay? Whereas with the uncatalyzed reaction, you have to go straight up and then straight down. The catalyzed is an easier option. And this allows for more successful collisions because what you're doing is lowering your activation energy to give more particles that ability to successfully collide. Hopefully that makes sense because that's the end of this um, slideshow really. We've covered um, about reaction rates. They're always to do with the number of successful collisions. Okay, And when you're explaining, when you're trying to explain why something reacts faster, you always need to mention the frequency of successful collisions. And then you need to also explain why they increase or decrease. So my suggestion to you after you've finished watching this, maybe for the second time, maybe you can go back and watch it again, is to write down um, a brief summary of the four different ways of increasing the rate of reaction and just write down, um, write down a sentence or two about why they increase the rate of reaction. So write down in terms of collisions, in terms of frequency of successful collisions. So each time for each of those four, so with um, surface area, temperature, um, concentration, and catalyst, why do we get an increase in the frequency of successful collisions? Commit those um, definitions to memory and you'll be looking pretty good for the start of unit four anyway. Once you've finished that, once you've written the four definitions down or once you've written the four explanations down, what I want you to do is go onto Edmodo and then there's a quiz called Collision Theory there. Okay, Do that quiz on Edmodo on Collision Theory. I think there's a number of questions. I think it's more than 10 this time. I think it's, I don't know, about 15 or so. So that's the first thing, the Edmodo quiz. And there's also going to be an Edmodo assignment called The Sugar Factory where you need to watch another YouTube clip and um, write a little assignment about this sugar factory. Lastly, um, my class is going to be doing a SAC on the investigation into reaction rates. So we'll look at that um, in class when I get back as well. So these are the things you need to do from now on. As I said, write down the four explanations using frequency of successful collisions and then do the Edmodo quiz, write the assignment and we'll look at the SAC when I get back to class. Until then, take it easy and um, happy studying.